Guys, welcome back to the channel. In the last episode, we made this, this fiberglass plug for our carbon fiber valve covers. In this episode, we're gonna get this mold prepped and ready to load with carbon fiber and hopefully make a set of carbon fiber valve covers. Either that or we're gonna make some expensive scrap. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so what we got here, this is the fiberglass mold that we made in the last episode. And what I did since the last episode, I just took some uh, sanding paper and went and wet sanded this part down, starting at like 800 grip, and then worked down to like uh, uh, 2000 grip and probably 250 grip increments. Uh, got this all sort of uh, sand down, and then I went ahead and used the 105 and 205 polishes to sort of polish it up using just a little three inch three inch guy to buff here and uh, that worked pretty good. So um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get this thing prepped up for loading carbon into it. And what that process is, is we are going to remove all of the excess, there's sort of like a film here you can see, uh, excess polishing compound and all that other stuff. And we're gonna use, um, first we're gonna use some acetone, give it a wipe down with acetone. Then we're going to use the Eastwood uh, silicon remover. And then after the Eastwood silicone remover, we're gonna let it dry. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lay down five coats of part all number two uh, paste wax. That is a tooling paste wax with no silicon in it. And we'll get this whole thing waxed up. And then after that, we'll uh, go from there. Okay, so I got three coats of wax up on the part, or the mold rather, and uh, one thing I forgot to mention is I taped off the edge, I probably left about mm, half to five eighths of an inch perimeter all the way around. Uh, so basically what happened is it waxed all the way up to that edge, so that way when we use our sticky tape uh, for vacuum molding, uh, the sticky tape will actually go on that unwaxed surface. Now I did scribe, not scribe, but marked with a permanent marker where that waxing ends. So when I put the sticky tape on, I will make sure that I overlap the uh, black line uh, just to make sure that any resin that for some reason could make it out to the end, which it shouldn't ever get out there. But if it were to make it out to the end, the sticky tape should block it before it gets uh, to the unwaxed uh, portion, which would cause it to stick. So um, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, now we're gonna add um, some uh, part all film spray and let that cure up on here and uh, that is going to be our re secondary release agent it's just the spray uh, spray and it's a one part film and uh, it's water soluble so it allows you to uh, separate the mold with just water so I'm going to load that up in just a cheap harbor freight gun uh, with a desiccant filter and get that shot on here and then once that is on uh, I'll peel the tape off before it tacks up and uh, that will be done for the release agent. So let's get on it. Okay guys, so we got seven layers of material uh, cut out over here while this PVA was driving, drying. What I have is I have, uh, this is Composite Envisions. Um, it's a two by 212, 3K material. Um, I have one layer of their first quality material and then I have a bunch of layers of the, um, it's like second, so it's basically cheaper, uh, good filler material. So that is what we're gonna lay up. And then between the second and third layer, I have some of the um, SF core mat material. This is uh, the two millimeter stuff and we're gonna lay that in here. So this, once the, uh, which way does it go? I already have it cut, sorry. Once the first two layers of carbon in, are in, this is gonna go in and sort of reinforce this flat spot and give a little extra thickness on that flat spot. So what I'm gonna do now is 
um, get some spray adhesive and just sort of tack up this first piece and I'm gonna try to get it laid in here and mold it into shape and hopefully it goes okay. <laughs> uh, I'm a little worried just because of how complex this shape is. Um, we'll see how the carbon conforms and hopefully we won't wreck the twill too bad. Um, if we do get some distortion, I'm not super worried about it. I knew that this was gonna be a complicated part and it may not be cosmetically perfect, um, but I will do my best regardless. So let's get the process started. So unfortunately this one's going in the trash, but uh, I went and kept working it anyway, just to try to get a feel for it. So where I screwed up was I started working one side and I bridged across, across and tried to get it stuck on this side. Uh, what happened then is I didn't have any freeness to work the edges um, and I basically had to pull, you can see here how the edges got real jumped up here just from me working it. So I got a little bit more of a feel for it now. Uh, this piece I'm gonna rip out and chuck up to uh, training and try not to do that again. So I'm gonna rip this out. I'm gonna um, basically cut out another piece of the good material, the, the first quality stuff, and then try again. Well, I am going to have to call defeat on this. I started out well, everything was looking great on the twill. I got this whole side boxed in nice and then got up to this upper lip and all these female corners are just tearing, like pulling the shit out of the twill and it's wrecking the part. So um, there's not much I can do. I tried relief cuts, I tried working it. Once I ruined this layer, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna keep working on it until I figure out a method or something, um, but I'm not getting it. So. I called a buddy of mine that runs a company that does a lot of carbon and he showed him some pictures and he goes, damn, dude, that is a tough part <laughs> to, to do, period. Um, that should really be a pre-preg part. And I said, well, that's great, um, but I'm not there. So uh, he recommended a backup plan, which I already kind of had in mind. And what that is, is if you've ever seen forged carbon fiber, um, it's basically a chopped and fused carbon fiber. I'm thinking about going with the first layer of chopped carbon fiber. So basically what we'll do is you take all these strands, you cut them up into little oriented patterns. I'll coat this thing with adhesive, drop it on, and then um, we will use basically the chopped carbon fiber to fill this because we don't want bridging in these corners, especially on the first layer, that's super critical. So I am going to rip out this second piece of carbon fiber and just say, well, you know, that's learning. And then uh, strip all the PVA back off of this because the, basically there's adhesive, too much adhesive now on the surface, it's not gonna look good. Just get this all cleaned back up, respray it or rewax it, respray it with PVA. And then we are going to do some chopped carbon fiber. I'm gonna take uh, some of these scraps, cut them up and do some samples here quick and then uh, restart. I'm not going to show you guys everything, but we're going to at least show you, uh, you know, the process of the chopped carbon. So it makes me sad to do this, but back to the drawing board. Okay. So I got the part or the mold all cleaned up and, uh, re-waxed, re, re pva The PVA is driving now. I have one of my layers of carbon. This is one of the seconds, um, from, uh, Composite Envisions, I screwed it up a little bit too. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start chopping this and I'm gonna try to cut the strands like two inch by two inch blocks and then start separating it and then get a nice bucket full of uh, chopped strand here. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get started on that and then uh, we'll try to glue everything in. That glue is nasty, it makes a big mess. So not a fan of that. I'm gonna have to find an alternative, but uh, it'll work for now. So. Let's get cutting.
Okay, so I got a little bit of adhesive uh, thrown in the mold here, just tacking up, give it a minute or two to tack. I'm gonna take this chop strand that I cut up. This is just the carbon broken down in. I'm gonna spritz it basically all over till I get a good coverage. Then once it, we get a good coverage, we're gonna work it into the corners. Again, and make sure we get real tacked in here so there's no bridging or anything like that. And uh, make sure we have it good and filled. Once we have it good and filled, We'll sort of let that tack off a little bit and then we'll actually start laying in the carbon sheet over top of that and that's going to be our actual strength. And then this will be the cosmetic layer. Um, not what I wanted. I mean, I do kind of like the look of the Ford Carbon. Some guys do, some guys don't. Um, but uh, I kind of like the look of it. It's just a matter of it's a very complex shape. So that's probably what we're going to have to go with here. If we had a pre-preg, I could cut out little strips and like work individual cuts in here and uh, maybe make this whole flange out of one piece of pre-preg here, work it in there, do all that kind of stuff, make a, a sheet down on the bottom. Um, but I'm just not quite there yet. So uh, we're gonna work with this for now. If I like it, I like it. And if I don't, I, it was a good practice and I can always order more carbon and the mold should hold up fine. So um, hopefully we can get multiple sets of valve covers out of this mold. So gonna go ahead and uh, start working it up. Okay, so I got the uh, chopped carbon and now I got another piece tacking up and then what I'm gonna do here is press this piece in and just try to work it into all the corners the best I can. Uh, might put some release slits in, those uh, tight corners just because they're not cosmetic anymore. And then uh, just keep working this part in and we're just gonna lay layer after layer. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Okay, so what I did is I just laid the flange in after these first two layers. The first layer is the chop, the second layer is this twill. Um, and what I'm noticing is that I'm building a lot of layer on the thickness really, or on the corners really fast. So originally I was planning on laying up like six layers of carbon in this. And what I'm quickly finding is I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm probably gonna get about three layers uh, on the flange surface and then um, probably gonna run out of room on the flange. Now what I can do is I can cut some of those pieces down and try to reinforce this lower section here and just build up in this pocket, which is probably what we're gonna end up doing to give it uh, the extra strength that we need. But uh, the thickness in the flange is building up quickly. So I got this pressed down, there's not any bridging. I put some splice cuts in here to get the bridging sort of taken care of here. So we're looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna keep proceeding. But what I'm gonna do next is lay on the core mat there. Uh, actually, it's not really core mat, that's a brand. Um, the core material. And uh, then we'll continue, we'll probably put one more layer on and then do another fitment check. Okay, so that's about maxed out. I got three layers on the flange, four layers in the inside here, and uh, two millimeter uh, core material. So about maxed out. Um, I think I got the bridging taken care of. I got it pressed down pretty good. Every once in a while, like this corner, I can feel it lifts slightly, but there's slack in the top and bottom. So I'm not sure if I just don't have enough adhesive on the under layer or what. Um, so hopefully that won't be an issue and we don't get like a big pull of resin, um, which, you know, with the chopped carbon on the other side, we'll have to see how it handles that, how it'll take it. So um, 
overall, we'll see how this goes here. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna cut out the peel ply. I'm gonna make the peel ply uh, large enough that, you know, obviously it can sink down in and uh, cover all the carbon. So gonna size it a little large and then trim it down to size uh, once it's in there. So I'm gonna get the peel ply on and then I'm gonna get the infusion mesh and then we'll go from there. Okay, so it looks ugly, but I think it's gonna work. So the masking tape here is because this, this mesh is not flexible. This is the uh, peel plies underneath this white stuff, and the flow mesh is on top. This flow mesh isn't flexible, but you can't let it bridge in these little inlets and grooves. So what I had to do is splice multiple sections in here so that this would have the flexibility to bend down into the part when the vacuum is pulled on it. You can see here that this is all loose and what we've tucked down in. Uh, and we'll just have to pull a vacuum on it and check it and make sure it's not bridging. Um, that's gonna be the tricky part. But uh, it's getting late, so I'm gonna take a break, uh, call it a night. And then uh, tomorrow <clears throat> I'll work on vacuum bagging this thing up and we'll check it. You know, if it doesn't work out and it doesn't look like the uh, peel ply and vacuum bag or the infusion mesh is quite where I want, I'll rip it off, that's cheap enough and uh, we'll adjust and try again. So uh, yeah, we'll just keep moving on here and try to you know, vacuum bag it tomorrow and see how it turns out. Okay, so we took this inside and I reworked it a little bit from last night when I filmed it. Um, what I did before was I taped both ends of this and that might cause an issue where it bridge um, because it could pull tight, pull the slack out and go tight in the middle. So what I did is I instead broke the pieces up into small sections of mesh and then only affix them at one point. So uh, that way there's no chance that anything could get tension in it and it shouldn't cause any bridging issues. So right now everything's done. I installed these, these are AirTech um, bleed fasteners uh, and they basically just have a bridging channel here that goes over top of our uh, spiral tubing. And this side is going to be our vacuum side. And then on this side, this is gonna be our infusion side. So we're gonna do a crosswise flow on this. And then so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go get some uh, vacuum bag material, measure it out. I'm going to put uh, about 16 inches of pleats on both sides, uh, on each side rather. Uh, and I'm gonna break those 16 inches in pleats uh, down into two eight inch pleats uh, right at the joint of where it's gonna sink. So one eight inch pleat here, one eight inch pleat here, one eight inch pleat here, and one eight inch pleat here. And then obviously opposite and symmetrical. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. And then we'll start the vacuum bagging.
Okay, so it's just a couple minutes later. We got everything back out in the garage. I have my vacuum uh, slash resin trap. This is a Baco engineering, I don't know, Amazon special. It's like a hundred dollar pot. Um, seems to hold pretty good. I actually did a whole check on this for three days and it didn't lose anything. And then just a cheap Harbor Freight uh, vacuum pump. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and flick the vacuum pump on and uh, test it out, see what kind of leaks we got. Uh, I used just some regular 3 8 tubing, stuck it in there and uh, did the same vacuum tape deal to here. And then over here on this side, this is the tube we just installed. And then I just have one of these little uh, hose clamps to squeeze it off. So hopefully that works. I don't know if it will or not. We're gonna find out. So let's get it turned on and check how it goes. Okay, so I got it all sealed up and we're gonna do an overnight hole test. I took a picture of where the gauge is at. Unfortunately, I busted the little stopper out of the gauge. Now the reading is wrong. It's still functioning, but the scale's not right. So I just took a picture of it wherever it's at right now. And then we'll come back tomorrow morning and check to see how much leak down we had. So I can't hear any whistling, can't pick anything up on the FLIR. So, and it hasn't moved yet in 15 minutes. So hopefully we got a good hold. Okay guys, so it's D-Day. I'm going to go ahead and charge this thing up with some epoxy. We did a leak down test last night and it was a lot better than the uh, previous leak down. Um, but I did get a little bit of drop and I was like, man, what is going on? I really checked this bag. Then last night I noticed um, a leak in the hose where these hose clamps are used. And so I decided that I was gonna stick a plug in it and then vacuum tape it. Well, it actually sucked the plug and vacuum tape in. So what that implies to me is that we are getting some vacuum leak right up at these clamps, forming a vacuum in here, and then it's drawing this in. So I'm going to um, not worry about the hole too much more because I, I, I'm pretty sure that even the values that we have should be okay. And if it's leaking out, sucking in the resin pot slightly more, I mean, I'm not particularly concerned about that because I'm not worried about a super dry part. Um, <clears throat> now the fun part is I gotta cut this off to get my vacuum cap out, but that's not a big deal. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, mix up some epoxy. Uh, the epoxy is a four to one mix ratio. I'm sorry, three to one mix ratio. Um, and we are going to get that mixed up. When I do this, I'm gonna basically talk you through the process now, and then I'm just gonna do it. So. I'm gonna mix up the epoxy. Um, I'm gonna use a, a drill a blade. Basically, it's like a, a propeller. I'm going to release the vacuum on this slightly, uh, roll all the way, put the epoxy in here, uh, pull a vacuum on everything and outgas it for about uh, 10 minutes. Then once that is done, I'm going to take the epoxy out, set it to the side, pull the whole part back down again. Once it is all down, I am going to put the infusion tube into the epoxy, and then I will crack open the infusion line and start leaking the epoxy in. Once the epoxy is flooded all the way through, which we will control, we want a very slow migration. I wanna use as much of the gel time as possible. As soon as it is all the way through, I will clamp off the vacuum line here, and this will pinch everything off. I will turn this valve to shut the uh, vacuum chamber and I'll turn off the vacuum pump. I will then leave it, probably pull in a little bit of extra resin for about, I don't know, a couple seconds or so, and then clamp off the resin feed. Um, at that point, we sit and we wait, and then it's 24 hours from there out. Okay, so the epoxy that we're using is the uh, Premium Resin Tech RDR 3386. This is a high temperature epoxy. Um, I got it through Composite Envisions. It is not shown on their website. You need to call and ask for this and they'll order it from Premium Resin Tech. It is a 450 degree uh, stability temp epoxy made with at an infusion viscosity. So they have a 450 degree tooling epoxy on their website, but it's for laminating. And this is the uh, 
uh, hardener that they recommended for this epoxy. So go ahead and we're gonna mix it up. I'm gonna mix up kind of a heavy batch. I'm gonna mix up 16 ounces, uh, which is a lot for this part. I estimated it needed about 12 with all the tubing, um, but I'm just concerned that I don't wanna run out in my first part because I screwed something up. So I'm okay spending the extra four dollars or whatever on epoxy just to make sure so uh gonna mix up a batch and then we'll get going Well, there's no going back now. So um, yeah, it, it went pretty good. So the infusion took about an hour, about an hour total from the time I cracked the valve to the time I shut the vacuum valve. So um, I did not have as much leftover epoxy as I thought I was going to have. And you can see I had it tilted over here to get every last bit. I was expecting to have about six ounces of leftover and I think there's about one and a half, maybe two ounces of leftover. So, yeah, not gonna cut it any shorter uh, for the next one. I, I think why that is happening is the chop strand mat that I cut, or I'm sorry, not chop strand mat, the carbon fiber that I cut into chop strands, um, I think is sucking up a lot more resin because it's you know stacked on top of each other, there's more void space. So that was a miscalculation on my part. I just took the layer that I cut up and included it as a layer, but realistically, uh, that ended up being a lot thicker uh, than what I expected. So. Slight miscalculation, but we did have enough resin to go all the way through without the part You'll see in the time-lapse that there was like a wave of bubbles that comes through initially and you know I outgassed it for 10 plus minutes um, And still got bubbles coming through so I'm not sure if that's Bad or not, but you notice that they it's just on the leading edge of the the resin and then all of a sudden behind it It's just a solid wave of solid resin. So I'm not sure if that's additional trapped air molecules in here or what um, we had a pretty deep vacuum is about 28 and a half millibar i'm sorry uh, inches of uh, mercury rather so not sure uh, but we'll find out if we have any air holes or pinholes or anything like that in 24 hours when we pop this out of the bag so looks pretty good wet it out nice and i don't see any visible air holes and in, in air bubbles in the part there's some air bubbles up here right at the you know, the vet, the suction tube, and then obviously uh, in the actual uh, vacuum tube, but nothing, nothing in the part. So 24 hours, we'll pop it out and uh, see how big of a mess we made. Well, between the last clip and this clip, I discovered something that I made a very stupid mistake. And that mistake was, if you go back to the footage where I was uh, mixing the epoxy, you'll notice that I put the wrong hardener in this epoxy. So unfortunately, this part may be completely fine cosmetically. I don't know, I haven't popped it yet. Just start telling that back. But we will not be able to use it as an actual valve cover. So this is going to be a trial piece. And that's about it. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull the rest of this off and then uh, get the board cleaned up and we'll try to pop the piece out. So it is what it is. I put general, the general purpose hardener in it, so it doesn't have the high temperature resin uh, or high temperature hardener. It, 
the bottles were sitting beside each other. I grabbed the wrong one and here we are. So lesson learned, we'll do that again. So I'm not sure if I should be happy or even more pissed off because it's it's literally perfect. Um, no pinholes, no nothing, stupid light. It's it's perfect. So I think I'm more upset than what I was before because uh, I was hoping that you know I screwed up the resin. So I was thinking, well, maybe uh, maybe the part wasn't good and I uh, you know got something wrong in the procedure or something and. You know, but now it's pretty much perfect. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be it for this episode. I'm going to recoup or regather my thoughts and how I want to do this. Um, well, I know how to do it, evidently. I'm evidently not that bad at it for just trying it for the first time. But uh, yeah, so we're going to redo this uh, with the real stuff. I might, I might do it off episode. I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did in this video and use the right epoxy. So um, until next time, guys, I guess this is a carbon fiber part and this is how you do it. Just use the right hardener. Oh. <sighs>